Yeah, we are recording. All welcome, right. Welcome. Thanks to you, C members, for joining us today. Um, so we're, we've got a bunch of projects lined up in the upcoming portion that we're going to be looking at today. However, I did want to take a few moments this morning and talk about Sandbox, what it is, what it means. Um, we've been getting a lot more questions and the queue for Sandbox applications as well as Sandbox projects is getting quite long. So I wanted to kind of come back to what is the Sandbox and what is the intent of it. And I wanted to have just a brief discussion around this. Um, so originally it was intended for early stage projects that we believe warrant experimentation. And we have some definitions for early stage that are reasonably well-defined functionality interoperability libraries, extending those projects, independent projects that are novel to existing functional areas or are attempting to meet a need that is currently unfulfilled, sanctioned by CNCF or commissioned, um, and any project that realistically wants to set foundations for incubation. So that's kind of the background associated with why Sandbox. And the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because we've been seeing a lot more applications of projects come in that provide just a slightly different take on existing spaces within the ecosystem. So there's not a lot of experimentation necessarily that's warranted further. Rather, it's just a different approach that they may be taking, provides different value, different feature set. And that's not necessarily bad, but something that we should be considering as we're reviewing these. We want to provide a collaborative home and environment for projects that are coming in that we believe are set up to successfully turn into highly mature projects. And we've had discussions in the past about well, it's cloud native, there's a need, but we're not necessarily going to see it fully go the way of Kubernetes or some of our other graduated projects have, but it's still necessary within the ecosystem. So try to keep a lot of this in mind as we have any um, conversations about the projects, considerations for where they're headed, what does our roadmap look like? Um, I wanted to ask you all, do you all have other observations, things that you're seeing with some of the applications today or in the past that would be worthwhile to call out? Um, I have a observation. So sometimes we, I see the project, uh, the scope is very, is, is narrow, is small. So the chance of it becoming, uh, you know, uh, much, I mean, uh, build a large, build a good community um, and also become very, you know, a, a mature project. It's not very, I, I think that, that that's, a, that's one thing may not be, has a good, may not have a good potential. So how mm -hmm. we should deal with that? Yeah, I think that's something that we should discuss probably on a per project application basis. How do others kind of feel around this space. Uh, I, I see um, two. Can you hear me? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Aaron. Um, sorry, I'm driving, so hopefully my signal stays. Um, I don't know. I mean, given the feedback on the governing board meeting, I'm curious if anyone else has given a lot of thought to not continuing to invest in sandbox as one of the levels. Not continuing to invest in sandbox and what was the last part of your statement as as one of the the project levels like i mean i was in the conversations when we started sandbox and what it was going to be and why we needed it very early on in the cncf's you know maturity mm -hmm. and and now i i am curious initially i it wasn't something i think i would ever consider but the more i look at the value we're providing and the feedback from the community is is this level providing even the mm. the value that people believe that it should be we've always struggled with that right and and is it preventing us from being able to nurture and care for the projects that are in incubation and graduation stage because I, i'd like everyone to kind of consider those things yeah agreed good question <laughs> I mean, I haven't thought about the last part, but is it providing the value that people expect at Sandbox? And I think, you know, as I look through some of these applications, the value that I think some folks expect isn't what we've documented. 
And I don't know if it's us communicating or that or not, because if you look at this, you know, it's projects that warrant experimentation, right? It's for things that need, say, a non, you know, vendor neutral home, right? You got a couple of vendors or a few vendors who want to work on something and it's in that early stage, but they need to, a place to go do it together. It's for things like that. And as I repeatedly read what people are asking for, they're like, it will bring a community to us, but it doesn't. We'll be able to get advertising essentially. So, you know, we'll be more seen, not at the sandbox level. And so somewhere there is a mismatch between what they're looking for and what the CNCF provides. I think there's a place for that early experimentation when you need, a, you know, a vendor neutral home. But I think it's a lot rarer than we sometimes see. Yep. And we'll see that actually a lot in some of the applications today. Um, so if we want to get started, um, any other like final comments on this while we're thinking about this and reviewing applications? Yeah, I mean, to I'll say two things. One is, you know, I think we should try to do a data driven approach and kind of like ask the sandbox projects. And as Justin alluded in the chat, you know, maybe projects went from sandbox incubation. Mm -hmm. I kind of see how that is because, you know, they generally don't get much from CNCF in the early days, right, outside of like doing paperwork, you know, to ensure kind of the neutrality, uh, you know, cleaning up governance, which is work on their end and, and you know, maybe an opportunity like to participate in like a, a project pavilion booth or, or something, or, you know, something or office hours at KubeCon, right, depending what we offer at the time. So it's generally not too much of stuff that sandbox projects necessarily uh, get, but I do think people find that valuable and, and just like being being part of a, a larger area where it's seen as a place to collaborate openly with, you know, uh, companies, vendors, and um, all, all, all that stuff. So that's kind of my observation there. And then on the, I think to Kathy's point earlier, it's like, if you look at the projects, you have like stuff that is like higher up the stack in some ways, like things that don't really depend on Kubernetes but are kind of part of our, you know, march up the stack, whether it's observability or things like backstage, you know, which, you know, could be easily used without Kubernetes and then stuff that's like maybe really low, right? Whether it's like eBPF or even kernel, you know, level, which historically we didn't really uh, have in, in CNCF because we could kind of consider that stuff uh, almost out of scope. So it's kind of like a an expanding of scope from like the top and a little bit of the bottom, if, if that makes if that makes sense. Yeah, Duffy. Yeah, I was going to say, I think administratively, Sandbox is actually kind of a burden because as as it represents a pretty significant pipeline of projects that are coming in, there's a lot of due diligence, there's a lot of there's a lot more work there involved. I think that isn't represented necessarily by that statement. Um, and I think the question becomes like, where should the beginning of that work sit? Should it be when projects are further along, whether they whether they have actually moved to the place where they're ready to commit to an incubation status rather than to a sandbox status, so that we can better align the amount of work with the amount of workers, <laughs> as it were, you know. Um, Chris had asked about work for whom uh, the project or CNCF, and I think it's a balance between. Uh, mostly on the project side, as well as the tags and the TOC and anyone else that's interested in the project. Um, I think this is an important call out and I was talking with someone about this yesterday is that we spend a, a fair amount of time looking over the applications, researching and understanding these projects, what it is that they're trying to accomplish, what is their current posture, and then there's the annual reviews that go on top of that and we don't have the equivalent level of care currently today with projects that are at incubating or even graduating level. And this is a community concern that's been brought up and it's a TOC concern as well. So we need to figure out how to strike a balance. And we've got some discussions happening later this year on that. So I think as long as we're highlighting and keeping these concerns in mind, I think we can continue to move forward with the reviews. Sound good? One quick question, a last one. Um, I think that we discussed, we're going to move the review of Sandbox Party to tag. Is that right? TLC yeah. Not review it anymore. Yeah, Maybe. that's in progress, actually. Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah. uh, why not? Can you spend a few moments talking about the plans for sure. that one? I can decloak and come on in. Um, so we had a discussion about this at KubeCon um, around how that was actually going to work. Uh, I've got some logistic 
kind of details running in place right now for how that would work more directly, um, but not yet ready for final review. So um, we're kind of working through some pieces around like how exactly we would distinguish um, like which project falls under which tag. So watch that space for more tracking towards being able to have that be a June work stream. Yep. yep cool. So. Um, one comment on that. I mean, that is how we used to do things. Yes. And I think it was efficient to have projects with the SMEs that could properly give advice or technical, you know, opinions on different projects. But does it have to be something that requires so much care and feeding? I mean, let's go through the applications today, but I really do want people to walk away thinking about, mm -hmm. could we be best taking this rigor we have around Sandbox and doing that instead for incubation? and graduation and a more efficient use of our time and that projects that want to get visibility and grow their community are simply put to the tags is on their agenda to present because that's that's really what they're getting out of it that they want to grow the community that's the great place to grow it and then there is no formality and the other things like governance that you mentioned chris um mm -hmm. neutrality yep. you know those are requirements going into incubation and they're not into sandbox so I, I don't know. I just, they, I feel they still actually have to sign, sign. They still have to sign stuff over at Sandbox, FYI. Yeah, and I think, yeah, and I think that, that also probably belongs on the table. Yeah. So we've got lots of discussion ideas. Um, we have an upcoming meeting, actually, if you'll take a look at our agenda um, to talk specifically around those topics. So let's get started with X-Line. Um, I wanted to kind of kick this off to what are your observations? Who wants to start the discussion on this one? It's a distributed KV storage for metadata management. Um, I went through this. Um, so um, I, I, I think I posted some questions. Um, it, it uses some something called a one consensus particle. I would like to know what's the difference between that, uh, between that particle and the raft and the Hexos, you know, which are more commonly known. Um, that's one question, right? Um, uh, because I, 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 I think we need to understand that, you know, what the, what differentiates value does it add? I think it gives some. I think Dean also posed similar questions, but still the answer I think you know it, it's it's not. Um, I think it's not. Um, uh, it does not have enough information. Another thing is, I look at the maintainer list, right? I cannot really. I think there's no maintainer's name there, just some other, there are some other information there. Maybe um, I didn't read so it the maintainers list, uh, they do have that. It's linked actually within the issue. They do include um, the CURP protocol maintainer. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, I see. Um, as far as the information around this, the protocol and the differences. This one um, that you called out, I had, I did not find any information on it. I think it's up to the project to make sure that that it becomes available through them for other individuals that have questions about it. Overall, though, how do we feel about the project in its current state, its roadmap that it has, whether or not this is an area of the ecosystem um, where we need to see more changes in development? Um, Dustin and then Nikita. I mean, my, my kind of, I mean, I, I put a comment on the bottom about have they done any correctness testing? I mean, I think it's an area where it's a big investment to build one of these, to, you know, build a distributed system. Um, it's not entire, I mean, it's not entirely clear to me what you know, if we have a strong enough ecosystem for maintaining these projects, given our issues with etcd. Um, so I'm, a, you know, a little bit concerned about our ability to sustain contributors to these projects. Um, but they are foundational in, in, in terms of what we're doing in cloud natives. So I think they I think it's in scope, but I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about the, you know, who's, is there going to be enough investment to make it work? Nikita, then Duffy. 
Um, so they do have some blog posts that talk about how the curve protocol is different than Raft and Paxos, but then I don't think they have documentation around it. So this could be one feedback from us. Uh, the second thing around maintainers, so like they only have three contributors who have had significant contributions. Uh, so I was in, like kind of adding on to what Justin said, I think it might be worthwhile if they invested more time in like growing the number of contributors, improving their documentation, uh, maturity overall, and then maybe consider applying to the sandbox again. They also presented at tax storage recently, but I really haven't, I haven't heard any recommendation from tax storage on this. So maybe we go back and ask tax storage what they thought as well. Duffy, then Matt. I think it's captured there. It's a, it's a complex project to take on and I feel like they're pretty early. Matt. Well, you know, I was looking at their reason for it, right? Because it's a project that could stand on its own. It doesn't need to be here. And one of the things is they're looking for support such as legal assistance with, you know, with aspects of potential IP and trademark issues. Now, I, I have no idea what this is, but they're not asking for some of the normal, hey, we'll think we'll get a bigger, stronger community or we're going to get marketing out of it. They appear to have something there that they're looking for, or if not, they're at least know the right words to say uh to hint at us that there's something there and so that might be a reason that they're looking for this vendor neutral home is they're looking for a place for that yeah and, and are there patent issues and if there are patent issues do we want the patent issues um with the protocol and, and i don't know what's going on here but they do call something out there yep um i second everything that's been said so far i think the patent issues if those if that's actually what they are some of the other concerns there's um, interesting phrasing within YCNCF and the benefit to it. But I, I also want to echo Justin's point um, around SED and the current challenges that we have um, in that space. So I think for us, this one is one that we need to be a little bit more deliberate and thoughtful of. Um, is there someone that is willing to point some of these questions back to the project? We can move it to waiting. I don't know that it's any place for us to render a decision anytime within the next two weeks. How do others feel? Getting some head nods. Okay. Who wants to consolidate some of the feedback for the project and that way we can get more information on it and then figure out where to go next. Who's the liaison for SIG storage? That's a good question. Well, I'm one. I can actually just take it up. Okay. Thanks, Nikita. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, Nikita, if you wouldn't mind assigning yourself to the issue for Xline. We'll do. Thank you so and much. And Nikita, for, uh, <laughs> to help you, this recording will be up on YouTube as soon as it comes through. So. All right. All right. Next up is Pipe CD. Um, it's a GitOps style continuous delivery platform that provides deployment and operations experience for any application. Uh, who wants to start the discussion? Uh, Justin? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I found that I found the explanation of how it differs from Argo and Flux to be a little bit um, on the weak side. It felt to me like, I mean, there were some differences, but it wasn't clear to me that they were really that big. Um, and so I kind of, I was a little bit, I'm a little bit, um, It's not. It's not clear. It's not clear to me that it's that fun. The, the differences are really fundamental. That was my kind of issue. I mean, there. You know, there are some. There's some nuance, but is it really a big diff enough difference to make to build a community around it? it seemed a question mark to me. It's, it's a single company project. Is largely, I think, as far as I can tell, they didn't, they didn't specifically state that. Asked some clarifying questions about who actually 
owns it right now but um okay um but it's yeah it seemed to me that the the differentiation was not very strong and um in a space where i don't know, I, I, it, it seemed to me we, we could go we could go to a say, tag app delivery and ask them to discuss whether they feel it's sufficiently differentiated that it should it fits others you know i i'm looking at it and they are one of those who are you know they're seeking visibility and community adoption right and they're looking for you know guidance around the, the whole community thing and that's not something that we give out really at sandbox uh, community right. is something you need to go build on your own so i think by joining the sandbox I think they may end up being a bit disappointed by not getting support on these things of YC and CF. Um, and so that that's the whole thing. I think this is one of those places where we might see a mismatch between expectation and what we provide at sandbox level. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. I think that this was one of the first examples I saw where it was a question around, we would like a community and the CNCF is a place for us to get contributors. Um, I would also like to highlight that they state that they are production ready. However, the project doesn't seem to have enough maturity around the rest of it um, to kind of warrant that fully fledged, highly mature, very stable, lots of adoption, um, which is why it's applying for Sandbox. And, and Duffy, I think your point of, um, you mean CD Foundation? Yeah, the Continuous Delivery Foundation. There's a foundation yeah. for that specifically. Yep. Yep. Um, do we feel like we've had a good enough conversation around this one to warrant a decision in the next few weeks? I'm gonna take silence as yes. All right, yeah. let's move on to the next one. So that one moves to a vote? Yes, that one cool. moves to a vote. Thank you. Yep. Cube Service Stack. Uh, Cube Service Stack provides a complete set of DevOps solutions and a lot of observability capabilities. If you've checked out their repo, they have a ton of sub projects within it. All of those. Um, who would like to start the discussion on this one? Okay, I can. Um, very similar story to the last one. Um, it looks like there is one maintainer that is contributing most of the code base as they self-identified. Um, so there's not a really good, there's not a lot of different perspectives um, coming into the project. Uh, they're also applying because they believe the CNCF is going to endorse their maturity and provide them with a community to get contributors. Um, beyond that, there there's not much else here their reasoning and benefit to the landscape is fairly straightforward i don't really see anything that's new and unique um, anything that is significantly profound that would impact the ecosystem in a way that continues to move this forward um, it certainly is nice to have a centralized service for a lot of the observability needs that are coming out of um, different end users and adopters in this space, but I'm not 100% sure that this is going to, to meet all of those needs or that those needs are well documented um, for the project to be successful. What do others feel? Yeah, I, I think I, I feel the same way. It looks like this project, it covers, uh, you know, as you described, covers a wide range of functionalities, but I do not see, you know, what is the uh, what is the differentiation or what is the real functionality is going to develop? Yeah, it's not clearly, you know, documented. Others? There also seem to be a lot of heavy copyright issues associated with this. So. Yep. This is the one that has a lot of comments around intellectual property and appropriate use of code. Um, I think that this one has significant challenges as a result of that. And we've seen this come up with other projects um, during Sandbox and we have an open issue on the TOC repo on the appropriate ways um, to, provide, to include open source um, within projects that are applying. 
So how, how would we like to proceed with this one? I think we need to say no. I mean, I, I think that the amount of work to get it into a state that we would feel comfortable just from a legal standpoint is possibly insurmountable and it doesn't add a lot of value. You know, it's, it's again, just a, a slight swizzle. So I, I just think it's not appropriate for what we're looking for in the foundation. And if I also look at what they're asking for, they're asking for visibility and adoption again, which mm -hmm. are things they're not going to get at the sandbox level. So it's a lot of work for us. And I don't think that we're going to deliver and give them what they're looking for um, by joining. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Amy, let's move this one to a vote. All right. Thank you. Next up, Cube Marine. It is an open source, lightweight, and powerful management tool built for end-to-end -end Kubernetes cluster deployment and maintenance. Um, who wants to start the discussion on this one? So this is like a Python-based um, kind of like an installer for Kubernetes clusters. So this is what I think is a very, um, if the scope is narrow, it's just using Python language. And, uh, it's another installer. So yeah, yeah. I, I do not see you know it as you know a lot of value. Oh. I do yeah, go ahead, Duffy. I was saying it is interesting that it's a combination of two projects to make to make this project Submariner and Calico's BGP stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say that and also it I I guess I am seeing an uptick in more like operationally related tooling in the space that's you know i mean i think backstage is like the the entry of that but this is kind of dev space operational space um it's kind of weird that it combines those two into something i, I don't know it's it feels more like a solution than a brand new project I, I guess that's the best way i can articulate it that is how i was seeing it as well mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to highlight again, they're looking for CNCF to demonstrate the maturity of Kubemarine through their sandbox application. And since it is more solution oriented, it's not necessarily a project. I don't know that accepting it into sandbox is going to make a significant amount of difference to their adoption. Um, how do others feel? I can't, I can't see this thing really becoming like a large project in the future like, because of its because of its solution orientation like I'm, I'm kind of stuck thinking i don't see how this moves yeah i i would agree i think um i don't know what the right special interest group in kubernetes may be but that it would probably be beneficial for the project um, to socialize with one of those sigs um, to get more adoption but i think if anyone else uh disagrees just let me know we can move this one to a vote as well. Okay. All right. It's on the vote. Moving on. All right. Next up is Kepler. Uh, Kepler is a efficient power level exporter that uses eBPF to probe CPU performance counters and Linux kernel trace points. Um, anyone like to start the discussion on this one? Well, it's nice that there's already three companies involved in submitting the application. So there's already kind of a wider piece of it. Mm -hmm. Kathy? Yeah, I think it feels a gap, you know, currently uh, there's not, you know, there's not, not much um, like, you know, the power or um, energy or, uh, you know, system entity, you know, um, aware, um, you know, this, um, um, the scheduling or the, you know, resource management. Um, so I think this will fill that. Okay. Others? Uh, you know, it gets into the whole multi-vendor space. One of the things that we want is for multiple vendors to be able to work together under something and having those multiple vendors, we already see that in the application. So that mm -hmm. is one of the things that I like about it is giving them that vendor neutral home. Yep. I agree. Um, I also think it works to try to standardize things across these vendors, which is nice in this space because sustainability is quickly becoming like enforceable in the UK. And so having 
you know, it's kind of like emissions for cars, I guess I think about that, where it was measured completely different, you know, working together in a vendral neutral place to establish what a standard would be for measuring these things to be compliant um, is pretty important. So I'm yeah. supportive of it. There's a lot of community momentum behind uh, measuring the performance as well. So I think um, be between Kepler being presented at several KubeCons that are recently and, and a lot more discussion around it, I think this is a good project um, to probably move to a vote with. Anyone else wants a head nods? Okay. All right. Um, next up is Loggy. Give me one second. There we go. Loggy is a lightweight cloud native event driven data collector, transformer, and aggregator. Um, who would like to start the discussion on this one? Okay. It's very, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of recent and I mean, last November it was created and it's, um, you know, kind of small. Uh, a lot of small contributors, but two, really just two people. So it's kind of very early stage. Yes, very early stage. Um, they have some ideas on where they're headed. They're pretty large level on their roadmap. Um, they're doing things slightly different, but I don't know that it's really novel or unique enough. I think the the project needs to probably spend a little bit more time on refining where they're headed and what what the differences that they're going to be providing within the ecosystem. How do others feel? I mean, again, if I look at their why the CNCF, right? The CNCF will increase the visibility of the project, attract more users and contributors, and help us continually improve and make logging more widely applicable. And I think. Those are all things they're not going to get out of the sandbox. And so it's a little bit of a mismatch. Yep. Yeah. So I think to Matt's point, there, I, I observed that there are quite some parties whose goal is like uh, like that. So do we need to document this in the sandbox so that people knows, you know, if their goal is like that, they may not, I mean, CSA may not help them very much at the sandbox level. I think that'll come later when we start digging into the data driven decisions around sandbox, but I think it's important to be mindful of Aaron you came off mute. Yeah, I just think it would be something that would be better communicated through the observability work group, you know, like I, I guess. There's a lot of different solutions in this space and I'm not sure how novel just at first blush that it is so okay and confirm the other statements that were made around the value as well. Are we good to move this to vote? Sounds good. All right. One, one quick side note. I, I do think that when projects are contemplating whether to enter into sandbox, like what they put into like the YCNCF piece, that they may actually think that they're going to get that value out of it, maybe not at sandbox. And they're not asking for that value out of a sandbox. Yeah. Maybe they're asking for that value out of incubation or through the life cycle of this project under the CNCF. I'm just calling this out because I'm like, yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Duffy. Um, all right, so this one will go to a vote, Amy. Sounds good. Moving on. Erie Canal. Erie Canal is a Kubernetes multi-cluster service. API MCS implementation and provides MCS ingress, egress, and gateway API for Kubernetes clusters. Um, who wants to start talking about this one? Um, yeah. Single person contributor project. So I think that just kind of is a no go for Sandbox. Yep, um, it's the open source implementation of the multi cl cluster service, which is still very early in SIG multi cluster. I believe that is under alpha. Um, however, Erie Canal says this is part of their commercial offering and the, the KEP itself is not very old and dependent on the maturity of the topology API. So I think there is a lot of things that still need to happen in this space. 
Um, highly recommend re-engaging with SIG multi-cluster to further the development of this project, but I don't know that it's at a point for us to be able to seriously consider it as sandbox. How do others feel? Matt? Well, you know, I'm looking at it and it talks about things like when using the Erie Canal as an MCS provider, you have to use it with OSM Edge, which doesn't seem to be one of the things that they're handing over, but tied more to their product. So that kind of decoupling between the project and whatever they're coming with a product uh, isn't quite clear to me. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that if it's a if it's a spec implementation, I would expect. I would expect that, you know, if we're going to take a spec implementation and it would be a collaborative one between multiple people trying to implement the spec as a would be the kind of logical starting point rather than a and and so some demonstration that you know it's a collaborative effort before coming in would seem right to me for for us for if we want to bring a spec implementation in for a new spec. Okay. Folks feel that we can move this one to a vote? All right. Next up is Slim Toolkit. Um, Slim Toolkit, also known as Docker Slim, provides a way to inspect, optimize Slim and debug containers. Um, quick highlight on this one, there is some identity and naming concerns associated with the project. Uh, DIMS previously had an exchange um, with the applicant around that. So this will likely need to be turned over for some uh, trademark and IP questions associated with the project. Uh, who wants to start the discussion on this one? It's been around for a long time. It's widely used um, um, under its previous name, which would have been even less acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> um, so generally, I think, you know, I think, um, you know, I know, I know the people who created it, they're, they're good community stewards. And uh, I think um, I, it would, it would seem to, um, you know, kind of fit into, I mean, it's not, I guess it, it's, it's a slightly weird part of the landscape. I'm not sure exactly where it fits, but it, I, I would think it would fit. So should, should this project, has this project um, gone and um, presented to um, the tech runtime? Uh, it looks like it's a, it's a project to slim down the container. Well, it's also for, it's also for observing what's inside the container, because what they found was that people couldn't slim down containers without understanding what what the slimming process was doing and what was in their containers in the first place. So it's not real. I don't think it's really a, a runtime fit either that clearly. It's a little bit, that's what I mean by it's difficult to know where to fit it in terms of tag. It does kind of overlap. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, it mentioned also debugging observability part, but it also mentioned the part that, you know, slim down, you know, the container size. Yes. So, so it's app delivery. Piece. Yeah, I, I, I would put it in app delivery because it's a developer yeah. tool, roughly, yeah, it, it would be my reasoning. I and I look at it this as you develop something and now you want to go ship it and you need to shrink it down because we're sending and caching these giant things all over the place. And that's a mm -hmm. delivery problem. Yeah, it's also a bit security because a lot of the a lot of the artifacts that come out of this are, are a hardened image include a set compro policy okay. like there's a lot of other stuff that actually overlaps yep. on the security side yep so it sounds like we're having more discussion around where does this fit in the landscape not necessarily whether or not it belongs within it so i think from what i'm hearing it sounds like this can be moved to a vote but I want to make sure that we have an opportunity to discuss any other potential concerns, um, caveats, callouts. Well, if we say no, what are we saying? Reapply? That's the thing. Is like I'm trying to get a handle on. So what, what it means going for a vote here, if it, it because it has been around a long time, you mm -hmm. know, to, and it to is just, novel. Yeah. Yep. So the the only other thing that I would suggest is that because it has been around for a long time, it does seem to have a fair amount of individuals that are using it, that maybe Sandbox isn't the correct place for it, that maybe they should be applying to incubation. 
How do others feel? I hadn't really considered that angle. Um, I, yeah, they're going to have to make a bunch of changes to get to incubation. I don't think they've got a governance. It's very heavy on one developer. And so they're going to need to make some changes there. I don't think it's ready on a quick glance at it for incubation and what we're looking for these days. So do we tell them to clean those things up and bring it back for incubation? Or do we say come into the sandbox and start working towards incubation? Yeah, I mean, we've, we've had a number of projects that have done the sandbox to incubation quite quickly and effectively. And I think that's a path to, in, to encourage because mm. it gets them in. It gives a commit that we we think they can do it. Yeah, this is actually one of the values of sandbox is that once they enter that sandbox, then they're they're uh, because of the IP thing, they're actually in a situation where they can more easily attract other developers to contribute to the thing. Okay. Do we feel? So could, Go ahead, Duffy. So they could actually move to incubation re relatively quickly because of that. All right. Do we feel like this one is good to go to a vote then? Head nods. All right. Next up is Eraser. Eraser is a project that helps clean up unused and vulnerable container images from nodes in a Kubernetes cluster. Who would like to start the discussion? For me, I think this is incredibly useful. I've talked to a lot of um, security engineers and software engineers that are tired of getting bad vulnerability scans back from their running environments. So anything that helps clean up those vulnerable images that are cached on disk would be ideal. However, it's not something that's top of mind for a lot of people. Um, I can't see a lot of widespread adoption, but I do see this as a space where individuals that are already invested and interested in uh, reducing some of those reports that come to them um, could provide value. I guess yeah. my own issue, I love the idea, but it's single vendor and it's single cloud. So is there, you know, I'd like to understand if this is, would work in AWS or GKE. I mean, I didn't, maybe I missed that. I kind of assumed it only used kind of Kubernetes APIs, but and it just had come out of Azure. But that was my assumption and understanding as well. And, and sometimes it's not necessarily a blocker because you know when Cloud Custodian came in, they were only AWS based, but they had aspirations to support other clouds. Like as long as that was clear, if that if this actually fell in that case, I think it would be um, okay at the sandbox level, but I, I haven't dived into this one yet. Yeah, I think um, I think this is useful. And I think also they say YCSF, they will grow the community of users and also contributors, right? So they could, you know, expand their, their scope or their usage to other cloud providers. So I, I, I guess this is something that we are Often asked, which is we block vulnerabilities from being pulled from the registry, but what happens to the ones that are already running? And I guess this is in the same area. But cleaning up the local images, I guess, also means stopping the workloads. And is there another project that is already doing this? Yeah, not what I'm aware of. Because this cleans up the images, but what happens to the running workloads? This was my open question in this project. What happens to the what? To the running workloads that are running vulnerable images. And oh, like it, this has an impact on, on running workloads and just cleaning up vulnerable images can just be done like that in the production system. So that, that was my main question. How does this integrate with the world? chain of um, checking vulnerabilities from the registry. I feel the thing that's tricky about this is like the growth of the project thing, right? So this is like a very specific use case. It solves, it is a, kind of falls into the solution bucket, right? Like while I think this is valuable, I don't know how, I don't know, it, I don't know that it would be able to really grow beyond its current scope to, or 
or adopt a wide enough audience that that current scope would make it a successful project? I think Ricardo has a good point on the direction of the project. Um, and, and Duffy, you do as well. Like it's solution oriented right now. There's still an outstanding question associated with what happens to those running workloads. Like we've gone through and we cleaned up all those vulnerable images that are cached, great, but then what? So I think there is opportunity for a future direction of the project um, if they're considering all of those challenges that come with it. But as it exists today, I'm not sure that it's in a good place. How do others feel? I, I, I think that when they clean up the images, they are going to make sure there's there are no workloads that's going that are going to use those images. I don't think they're going to remove the images when their workloads that's running using the those images, right? But of course, in the future, if there are new workloads that need to run uh, on that node, I think they probably are going to download the images again from the image registry. Mm -hmm. Because here, I think they say they are going to remove this unused um images first how they define that you know how they make sure that that that's a, that's a mechanism uh, there but i think you know that's fundamental they need to make sure when they remove the images there are no workloads that's that are using that using those images otherwise it's problem i mean the fun, fun, the the basic functionality will not work right it's a good question, but I think they should have taken care of it. Otherwise, how could they work if they just oh, remove yes. some images I I think and their the workloads using those? That's a disaster. The question, the question, Kathy, was more how that, that makes total sense, but it's more how do they plan to integrate with the rest? Because cleaning up and yeah. use the images is useful. And if then I can redeploy the workload. Yeah, by pulling the image, like there's a wall chain that should make sense. So we're getting a little bit into to armchair architecture here, and I love mm -hmm. doing that, but we still have some more. We've got about ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I wonder, are we ready to vote or give feedback? Is there something we should do with this one, given what we're seeing here? So that that's I, thanks, Matt, for kicking me off. That was going to be my question is based off of the discussion that we're having right now and some of the questions that are coming up around like where it's currently at in its application, where we could see it going and some of the considerations that are currently architected for it. Um, this sounds like something that we'll need to assign a TOC member to go back to the project, ask some more questions and then potentially revisit at a later date unless folks feel that it's at a position where we can make a decision. So yeah. Matt nodding his head to the first one, Kathy, you as well. Others? Yeah. Okay. Who wants to be the TUC member to communicate back to the project? Ricardo? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Ricardo. All right. Moving. Sorry, Ricardo. I, I cannot hear you very clearly, so I may not understand your questions. Yeah. All right, moving on to Headlamp. Um, it's a fully featured and extensible Kubernetes dashboard. Um, they're specifically looking for a vendor neutral home, but don't necessarily <clears throat> provide a lot of background or information where they're experiencing any challenges because they lack that. Um, but I'm curious, what other folks feel about the project? It's relatively straightforward. There are existing Kubernetes UIs. Um, that exist within the ecosystem and even outside of the ecosystem. This one has a slightly different take on extensibility, though. Yeah, and if I remember, I think the Kubernetes dashboard also now has plugins to it. Uh, I haven't used it in a long time, but I think it has a plugin mechanism as well. Um, yeah, I feel the same way. I do not see, you know, what what uh, a lot of you know what have. What have you say that it's going to have some some UI extensibility? I think the scope is small, I feel. Well I, just, I do not know what is other exactly, you know, the, the, the differentiation or the a key values that it's going to add. Matt. You know, I, I look at this and I think, okay, there there's there's a number of dashboards out there. Some are proprietary. Some are, you know, they've been making changes. Um, it would be really nice to have one that's always going to be freely and totally open. 
Uh, we have a bit of that in the Kubernetes dashboard, but I haven't looked at that in a long time, but they did have some trouble getting you know enough contributors and things like that. I like that this is both uh, a desktop app and you can run it as a server because people are really looking for that as a desktop app uh, these days and having one that's totally free and open. I really like that, but they've also been around for a while and been somewhat successful. The thing that catches my attention um, is their interest in a vendor neutral home. And are they looking for multiple vendors and people to start working on it there? That's the one big thing that catches to me that says, maybe this does belong in the CNCF. I think this is generally the sentiment that a lot of the Kinvolt projects are gonna come to us with because they're in a situation where now they are now part of Microsoft and so for their projects to continue to work in an open source environment, they're concerned that uh, because it's a Microsoft project, they're not gonna be able to get the, they're not gonna be able to like pull other people into it rather than if it were a CNCF project, the people behind Kinvolt would push for, would, would be more open to the idea. So I'm hearing a need definitely for Sandbox, also hearing some questions around um, working within the space with the existing Kubernetes dashboard that's already there, making sure that we, we have multiple options available within the ecosystem. Um, how, does, how do folks feel? Is this something that we should go back to the project and ask more questions on it? Or is this more around ready to go to a vote? Um, I was also thinking, like, since it's mainly Kubernetes based, why not just bring it in the like Kubernetes six or something like that, and work with the SIG UI folks on it? Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's another good path. How do folks feel around that one? Lots of head nods. I, I don't know. In general, in general, we seem to have had the arrangement that they prefer things to come to CNCF mostly. So. I think it, I think it kind of fits in, um, fits in CNCF. Okay. And, and it does provide the, something we don't have with Kubernetes dashboard and that's a desktop app, um, which we're seeing just a lot of interest in those kinds of things. So I'm hearing move to vote, probably some still open questions around it. So. So that sound about right? Head nods. Okay. Amy, let's put the headlamp to a vote. Adding to a vote, moving on. We got two more, I think we can do it. KubeZoo, lightweight Kubernetes multi-tenancy gateway. Um, this one looks like they're just looking at adoption. However, I do want to call out, they currently don't support anything beyond Kubernetes 124, which is end of life in July of this year. There's a lot of missing information in this. Anyone have strong feelings about moving it directly to a vote? I, I think we should probably ask questions around it, right? Like the their reason for the CNCF is community adoption and contributions. I think there's a mismatch there. Um, then there's obviously the Kubernetes versions they don't support. I'm sure we've got other questions. We should probably ask them. Did we send them to a SIG though to get that answered? Like I also, I mean, what more would they get from us besides we would be regurgitating the process that's already out there? This is obviously very anemic in terms of an application to try to convince us. I, I'm just, it seems. Uh, well, like I, so while I think they could benefit from someone uh, working closely with them to provide more robust set of information. I think given the amount of time commitments that we already have and the level of effort that it would be to bring this up to an appropriate level of content for a proper amp application review, I don't know that it's worth our time or energy right now. How do others feel? Um, it's interesting that they don't, they don't list their competition in that space. There are other projects doing this and other thing. Yep. I agree. Um, I, I agree that it may not be worth the time. Okay. Uh, Amy, let's move. I'll take this one as like reapply with more details. It's fine. Yep. Cool. All right. Sounds good. All right. Last one that we have for today, SOPS. It's in the 
Secret Operations. Um, it's an editor in the form of a command line tool and SDK for helping manage encrypted files in a variety of structured formats. Anyone want to take a first pass at this one? I can take a first pass at it. Um, so okay. SOPS has been around for a number of years. I mean, it's yeah. used, it's a dependency for Flux, which is probably why you see a WeaveWorks uh, person on the application. And it's been maintained by Mozilla for years and years. And I think what they're looking for is to find a different vendor neutral home for it um, because Mozilla is not so much investing in it these days. And there are people who want to, who aren't under Mozilla and they want that other home. Um, I can't even remember how many years ago I started using this. I know it's been around for a while. We've used it in Helm. Uh, Flux uses it. So it, it is mature and stable. Actually seeing it at Sandbox is interesting because I think they're one of those ones that may be on the fast track to something like incubation once they figure out their governance and everything. They've got multiple people, so it fits the vendor neutral home. Uh, so for me, it looks like it's something that fits. Yep. I completely agree. I'll add on to that, however, that their last release looks like May of 2022, and they're not doing any more active development based off of the information they have here and within their repository. Um, their, contrib their contributions are on the decline, and that might be because of where they're currently housed. They did make mention that they've been approached by CNCF maintainers and contributors through those projects that Matt called out, but I haven't we haven't really seen anything happen as a result of those discussions, at least looking at the project's repository. So uh, it sounds like we really feel like they should be incubating, but there might be some potential um, health and sustainability concerns associated with the project coming in. Anyone else? I mean, I think it's, you know, it is, a, it is a relatively mature project. I think there might be, there might be ways that people, I mean, I think certainly, I think there are ways in which people want to uh, potentially take it in different directions, but they might involve just using it to build something on top in CNCF and things like that, rather than, you know, changing the direction of the project. It's just, you know, it's a stable base. And as Matt says, they, you know, people have found it easy to adopt, to use for things in CNCF now, and that might be the best path as it's a stable substrate on which you build other things. And that's, I think, fine. Um, there, there is fun. one, yeah, th there is one thing that we probably need to address, um, and that it is MPL version two on its license came out under Mozilla, makes sense, and they have over 100 contributors over time. So, what does the licensing mean to the CNCF as well? Um, I think it's, I'm, uh, you know, functionally bringing them into sandbox and seeing if they can breathe life back into this, I'm good with. Uh, it's there's licensing and things like that. And I'm not sure how those all work out. Others concur with Matt's recommendation to move it to a vote. Maybe consider motivation given the adoption by so many in research, there might be some things to clarify. But if we move it to sandbox, I think it will be pretty fast that they apply for incubation right after most of the state. So okay. So Amy, we'll move this one to a vote then. Sounds good. That wraps us up for today. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Um, I will see you all next week. Have a wonderful day. Thank Bye. you all.